So now is what we call the rollerboard session, uh, which is where you hear the click, click, click of rollerboards as everybody walks out of the room because they think the thing's over. But no one's flying anywhere from, from a conference, so you, there's no excuse for leaving. So the idea now is just to have a, a sort of wrap up uh, of the day's activities and just to get a sense of the sort of what's transpired here today uh, and what we can hope for the future. So first of all, how many people have not learned anything today? All right, so far so good. Uh, how many people feel like they really got something out of today's activities? All right, I take that as a, 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 certainly a, a majority. So um, the rest are just too tired to raise your hands probably. So what I tried to do uh, was to go around into the various sessions during the day and try and capture some points from them uh, that uh, I thought would be worth uh, sort of just ending with. So, uh, so those are the reflections. So can you bring up the, yeah, thank you. So uh, I guess the first thing, which we of course heard a lot about, was the, the large language models and the frenzy that all of that uh, has brought forward. I like, I actually think that in, in many ways, it was like, it's like what happened when the World Wide Web came along, but it was on steroids. And I can tell you that I was at a meeting many years ago with Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web. And after we both spoke, we went and had lunch. And neither of us actually thought that, at, even we were talking about what was going to come in the future. And neither of us had any idea, or even mentioned the notion of social network. So, you know, it's clear that this is, what, what can actually come from what's going on is, is yet to be determined. I'll also say that what we heard in that session was a lot about, already, about refinement of large language models uh, and, and, and essentially improving them, and then unexpected applications that are things that I hadn't even thought of that people were already doing. So this is, it's clear that this is just the very beginning, the tip, of something that's really uh, about to happen. Uh, and then the education session, uh, I think there's, there are questions about the notion of where AI is with respect to data science. There are questions right now in certain institutions, for example, whether, where, where, including our own, where does AI sit within the institution from an organizational perspective? And I think that's something that we, we're actively talking about. Uh, I know, for example, at UNC Charlotte, they actually have had a discussion. They, they, they're one of four or five other places in the country that have data science schools. And they've been actually having a discussion, of, they have a data science school, they're having a discussion about having a school of AI as well, which seems to me to be a bit misplaced, but that's just my, my view. But there's, that's, that's part of it. I think the scope of, what, uh, of, the, of education and what we teach it's clear that there's so much that can be taught in this space, and yet there, there is a certain sort of time limit as a po for a given degree that really is reflective of that. So, uh, and then there's a, the question of applications versus fundamentals. This was discussed by the group. And, uh, you know, I think what we try in our, within our school to have a balance between that uh, so that the, the people are reasonably well trained when they leave here. And then what I mentioned earlier this morning, this notion of cradle to gray, uh, where, where the, the idea, this was talked about, what goes on in the K-12 space, uh, and then what goes on in the executive, uh, well, I shouldn't say executive, but uh, lifelong learning uh, phase. So all of that was, that was discussed. Uh, I think AI and society, there was a lot that was said there, but really this comes up time and time again, the notion of the human in the loop. And then AI and the environment, uh, th there was new technologies and predictive modeling for intervention with respect to f things like uh, water flow and rivers um, and the use of LIDAR and other technologies in how, um, you know, that how things are being measured. So I think looking at all of this in the context of just AI is a little misplaced because of what's happening at the same time are all these different technologies that are actually also really on, on the up. As an example, and I'll give you a little scenario that sort of reflects this because it relates somewhat to the environment. But there, what's clearly happening in the environment is a danger to coastal, uh, uh, coastal regions. 
And how do we, how do we deal with that? So one scenario, and this is a five to 10 year like vision, it's just a, a, it's just a guess at what might happen. But we're developing, we've, we, this institution are going to have uh, a biotechnology institute that's going to be built, uh, as you, many of you know, uh, down on, on Fontaine. So that's going to have a lot of different kinds of activities in it. One of them will likely be things that relate to gene editing. So there's already efforts, for example, to take seagrass that's actually used, that grows naturally in the ocean. And so this is how things start to come together. This is like a future scenario around environment. This wasn't talked about. This is just something I've made up. But it brings, it brings these things together. So that, you know, you can genetically engineer seagrass, which is a natural uh, uh, plant, and that then causes uh, the, the soil and so forth to actually aggregate and, and, and uh, plant an animal life around that. And so by having a more resistant seagrass, which could be genetically engineered, you can actually make, potentially make improvements. But where do you put this seagrass? Well, now with various types of LIDAR, you can actually measure, you can actually look into the ocean, at least in the shallow waters, and you can actually look at the patterns of where this already exists, and you can supplement that. So these, these are just like examples of where uh, technologies come together. So you, you're, you're using these kind of technologies, you're using predictive analytics to determine where this should actually take place. Uh, and you're then planting and uh, presumably in some way protecting the environment. So all of this would come together. That would, to do that requires also a level of entrepreneurism that we, the university is trying to build out so that you take these ideas, it's not just a matter of publishing a idea, it's really about seeing this uh, actually to translate it into something that would actually uh, lead to improvement in coastal uh, environments. So just another example of what could happen in the, in the environment space. Uh, AI and health, I think the notion of dynamical systems uh, and how we, um, how, how living systems are not static entities, that they're, they're there are, there's, they're very dynamic, and we're doing much more on a temporal scale with respect to those systems we did before. Uh, and then technology and mental health, uh, well-being, which is something I just touched on just then. And then also, I would say, the prediction of success as it relates to certain types of, say, uh, interventions and uh, procedures that occur in healthcare. So example that was given was a heart transplant. Uh, and, making, and making predictive analytics about improving the success rate within heart transplants. So all of these things were all talked about today. So it was really, uh, it, it's just a, broad, a very broad swath of activities that are all, frankly, very exciting and all lending towards uh, improvements in uh, health and well-being and the public good and so forth. So it's a very exciting time. So. I'd like just to finish up with getting any comments that you might have based on your impressions today and things that you might want to say that relate, uh, that would help us close out, things to think about as we leave here today. Don't all speak at once. I'll start picking on people in a second. No one? Just wait for the microphone. I was afraid that ultimately we'd have to fusion bio biologically with AI to be valuable in this new ecosystem. But I'm encouraged after today that we can leverage this as a tool and we can better understand ourselves, our problems and our society and make a big positive impact in the world. Together with AI, we can evolve together and we don't have to plug in necessarily. We can benefit each other. Is that a sort of general consensus in the room? Who would Who's optimistic about, about the, the deployment of AI versus uh, pessimistic? Who's optimistic? Ooh. Who's pessimistic? <laughs> the kind of people I would expect. Alex is always pessimistic. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Other comments? Come on, you've got to say, you must have some thoughts after today's activity. 
Heidi, what's your thought? <laughs> Heidi Lanford is on our advisory board. And she's wonderful, so she's going to be angry with me now. But <laughs> um, thanks, Phil. Uh, no, I well, I was only here for half of the day, um, but I think this is. It's wonderful that we have an institution that's focused on this, and this is going to be part of every aspect of our lives. It already has been. We've already been, as consumers, uh, using data, having data inform our decisions and things that we do, and to do it in a disciplined and pragmatic and healthy way with all of these different wonderful use cases that you heard about today. I you know, welcome to the future, and it's great that UVA is taking such an interest in this. Thank you. Perhaps we should end up by hearing from one or more of the students. You're the, the next generation to be uh, living this and carrying it forward. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I was just curious on a more personal level. I'm a current student in the MS online program, uh, and I feel like it's really hard to be at a conference like this and not just get extremely overwhelmed with all the different things that uh, are going on and are coming in the future, and just wonder how you just manage uh, not finding it all too overwhelming, basically, and <laughs> feeling like you could contribute, basically. When I started doing this, I had hair. <laughs> uh, but, well, it's, it's true for all of us. I mean, it, but at the same time, it is overwhelming. Uh, but at the same time, it's incredibly uh, exciting. And we're all on this journey. And it, perhaps it's slightly harder to see when you're doing it online as opposed to residentially. And I, I, maybe the technologies of the future will address that to some extent. But it's been, you know, it's an incredible honor for all of us to be actually founding a school. Yeah, it's just a remarkable opportunity that, uh, and, you know, I was saying it, um, I, it, just, it just came out when I was presenting to the Board of Visitors, our trustees, about progress with the school. I just said, you know, we've, we've actually hired 100 people uh, since we started. And, you know, I, it's, I suddenly realized that's our great contribution to what's going on here, is that we've hired and brought 100 new people with a lot of real amazing intellect into the school, and both staff and students. And then, of course, that's attracted, that attracts the students. And so, yes, there are lots. It is, it is a mind swirl. But, uh, but I think we're all, you know, we're all very excited to be doing it. And I think... And Scott Stevenson, who spoke earlier today on, on the video, uh, he actually said, you know, something to us that was really, <laughs> I think, I've stuck with me a lot, which is the hardest thing to do is to figure out what not to do. So we, we've tried to be somewhat restrictive to, to really doing those things like health and environment that clearly represent the some of the biggest challenges to society as we go forward. So that's at least how we begin to, to focus ourselves going forward. And uh, hopefully we'll collect, all of us together will make a difference. Maybe that's a good note to end on. <laughs> so all I can say is thank you very much for being here. Um, Arlen, do you want to come and say something? Come on. Arlen Burgess is our uh, Associate Dean for Administration. Her and the team have uh, put in enormous effort, so why don't you just close out for us? Sure. Thank you. Um, so thank you all again, uh, uh, Arlen Burgess. You all maybe have seen uh, my name on emails and things like that. Um, I will say that uh, this is our ninth annual Data Palooza, as Phil mentioned at the beginning uh, of the day, and um, uh, we have uh, the room has been full and the conversations have been um, diverse and lively. And so I thank you all for um, for taking the time to spend with us today. Um, whether you've been here in person or you've been joining us online, we've had lots of folks. 
folks um, that have been engaging with us online. Um, I, I would just say that um, uh, a couple of things, this, is, this conference is made possible by the fact that we have that amazing growing team that Phil has been talking about. And so um, I wanted to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to the School of Data Science team, the folks you've been seeing that have been directing you on where to go, how to eat, what to, um, uh, what to say, all of those kinds of things. A particular shout out to our administration team and also to our communications team. So I want to give a big round of applause to the volunteers for today. And then, <laughs> and then also, um, of course, for our um, for our industry partners that um, that really make it possible for us to do things like this. And so um, they are now <laughs> very brightly in my face here. Uh, Capital One, LMI, Quantitative Investment Management, the Noble Reach Foundation, Microsoft, and the CoStar Group. And um, uh, we're always excited to partner with industry because um, we know that there are such great opportunities with public-private partnership, um, and we can all do better together. So um, huge, huge thank you for them and their partnership with us in a variety of ways um, throughout the year and all that we do. Um, I will finish by saying, hey, look at that. He's way ahead of me. Um, that um, we are the school of data science and data is incredibly important to us. And so we really, really, really want to hear from you. And so the QR code that's up on the screen right now will also be emailed out to you. It's also on your tables. Um, we may have an interest in you filling out this short survey. So please just take just a moment. Um, there is an opportunity to enter your information. You want to get a little raffle for some awesome data science swag. You can do that at the end. Um, but tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, um, what you want to see more of, all of that kind of stuff, because we bring this content because we love to see folks in the room. It creates conversations to move forward. So um, we're really excited that you've been here today. We hope that you have great things to say. We want to hear the great things. We also want to hear the not so great things, but more of the great things um, than anything else. Um, and so, so please take a minute to fill that out. Um, and then also, um, it, just an exciting note that um, you know the hotel and conference center that's being built here is not going to be built out yet. So next year we probably um, will be still um, here. But for those that don't know, the building that's going up on the Emmett Ivy corridor there at the corner of Emmett, Emmett Street and, and Ivy Road is the new School of Data Science building. And so um, by this time next year, we hope that all of you will have joined us um, for one of Phil's famous cocktail hours because he's going to um, be wearing out that terrace that we're building up there. So um, as that building goes up, we hope that that physical representation of the school um, becomes a home for all of you to come and participate in the life and the community of data science at UVA. With that, thank you so Anything else you want to say? OK, thank you so much for being here. We do have. We do have a reception. We have some food and opportunity to continue the conversation in the South meeting room. So please join us if you've got a few minutes.